talking with the experts. Want to know how to reach intent-based searchers interested in your product or service? Listen to Jeff Crane in episode 290. I think that is the, you know, the common uh, thought is that it's extremely difficult. You know, it's technology, it's very complicated. And there definitely are nuances. And once you get to a high level of spend, it becomes extremely complicated um, for certain channels, for sure. Uh, but just to get started, if you have a, you know, a base goal and you're looking for a you know, small geo target, a small niche audience, and you have a relatively you know, affordable small budget, you can still make it work and you can still scale quickly. The best thing about digital marketing is you can always turn it off right away. I've, I have a campaign on tonight that's not performing well, I can just press pause. It's a lot different than your traditional campaigns like TV or radio, where you're typically locked in for a set amount of time. You can always pause and then restart the campaigns for digital at any time. Good question. I think that basically the response that you see in the ads that do work on Google, they will trend over to uh, TV and radio, not 100% of the time, but we do see a lot of carryover. If it's the same target audience, whether you're reaching them on Google, whether you're reaching them on TV or radio, the same message uh, will work. Welcome to Talking with the Experts. This is where we discuss great ideas to take your business to the next level. How do we know these ideas work? Well, it's because we're talking with business owners who are using these ideas. Business owners who have years of experience and expertise. All things business by business owners for business owners. And now, here is your host, Rose Davidson. Hello and welcome to Talking with the Experts. I'm your host, Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com. Talking with the Experts is about all things business by business owners for business owners. And you can find it on all good podcasting streaming platforms and on YouTube. Let me ask you this question. Do you use Google? Do you pay uh, for ads on Google? Well, my next guest, Jeff Crane, is a Google expert. And we're going to be talking about paid search. And Jeff is a Senior Director of Sales and Marketing at Kingstar Media. He has been in the digital marketing and media sales industry for over 12 years. He has purchased over $100 million worth of performance-focused advertising across various platforms, and he enjoys helping business owners acquire new customers uh, at their target cost. Welcome, Jeff, and thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Rose. Yeah, so let me ask you how you got into um, helping others with their Google uh, paid searches. Absolutely. So my first uh, foray into digital marketing and my first Part of my career, I worked for a large uh, advertising agency and I got put on the digital team. I focused on the brands Coca-Cola and Johnson & Johnson. One of the first things they had me do was learn Google search. It was still in its relative, I wouldn't say infancy, but uh, people were still learning about it. It was a little bit more of the wild, wild west, an untapped space. Uh, so I really got my hands uh, dirty and I have watched the platform grow uh, from in those 12 years and seen a lot of growth. And what I found is that it's a great channel for intent-based searchers. Uh, people go to Google to look for a question to be answered, uh, look for information about a certain topic, and it gives businesses and advertisers the opportunity to be uh, top of mind and have their ad um, right below the search bar, uh, and hopefully in response to that question. Uh, so, you know, through various keywords, ad uh, focus, you know, marketing and uh, research, we're able to place those ads uh, for the effective uh, intent-based search. Well done. Now, d uh, tell me how expensive is it to use Google Ads? I know that at the moment I've got a six hundred dollar uh, bonus sitting there, um, and I've never placed an ad, so that's obviously a way to get me to buy ad space. So, what is the expense, um, and you know, how do people get into and feel comfortable with Google Ads? Yeah, so the great thing about Google and even most of uh, social or digital marketing in general is a lot of the information and the how to uh, learn and become like a beginner or intermediate very quickly is all available online uh, through YouTube videos, through Google uh, has very many, um, you know, courses to take that are for free. It's very easy to learn the nuances so that you can easily build a campaign to start. In terms of costs, uh, it's all based on a cost per click. So depending on the app, on the kind of vertical that you're in, certain verticals are obviously a lot more expensive than others. A vertical like a, a lawyers or medical 
those kind of keywords can be in the 50 to hundred dollar range just for one click. Whereas, you know, in auto insurance, uh, credit repair, those kind of verticals, some of the clicks can be in the 50 to one, 50 cent to $1 range. So that makes it a lot more uh, feasible for a smaller budget to play. You're also able to set your budget targets. You can set a daily budget of five to $10, or you can set upwards of $100,000 a day. So you can really scale it to whatever your daily or monthly budget is. So on the, uh, on the um, in comparison to Facebook ads, or LinkedIn ads, how cost effective are Google ads? Yeah, so I think it all depends on your KPI, Rose. So really, what is your goal for marketing? And that will determine if it's effective. Certain channels like Facebook are better suited for uh, businesses that are you know, less intent based and more promotional based, where they're looking to advertise a new product to a new service. LinkedIn is more uh, professional. Uh, that's the vertical that you're playing in. So just understanding the ecosystem for each LinkedIn typically is business owners looking there to communicate with other business owners or other business professionals. Facebook is more of a social channel, people looking to connect with friends and see what they're up to. And Google is more of a place where people are intent-based looking for a response or an answer to something. So just understanding that each platform is a little bit different and then formulating your objectives and messaging to each. Now, keyword search is, is uh, you know, should be top of mind for any advertiser. Uh, how do you find the right keywords to be using so that you get, you know, more eyes on your ad? Yeah, that's a great question. So there's a number of tools out there. There are competitive research tools like SpyFu, spyfu.com. You can actually get a free trial. Uh, what you're able to do is, let's say you're, uh, you know, in the, the credit card company, your visa and you want to see what MasterCard is bidding on. If you type in mastercard.com into this uh, competitor search tool, it will actually show you all the keywords that they're bidding on and then the ads that they're using for those keywords. So you're able to see over the course of time, approximately you know, how much money a company has spent on a certain volume of keywords. And you can make the decision be like, okay, well, this keyword now they have been spending for the last 12 months, it must be valuable for them. Maybe it's a chance for us to bid. Google also has what's called a keyword planner, where if you just type in a, any URL, it will give you the suggested list of keywords for it. If you type in you know, one main kind of broad based term, like let's say uh, health, it will come up with a number of keywords that are related to that. So between the keyword planner on Google and the competitive tools like SpyFu, SpyFu that gives you the options to plan and, and attract the proper keywords. So the keyword planner in Google, is that a, a paid uh, platform or app or is it free? It is free. So every Google ads uh, account uh, will have that keyword planner tool built in. You don't even have to spend any money to be able to access it. It's part of the platform and free for everybody to use. Excellent. Um, I guess, um, you know, in, intent based searches, can you just explain what that term means? Absolutely. So an intent base would be if I'm looking to order pizza tonight. I'm looking, I haven't ordered pizza. Maybe I just moved to a new city or a new town, or I'm, you know, there for business and I don't know where to order pizza from. So my intention is to find a place to order pizza from. So I'm going to go to Google. I'm in New York City for the weekend. Best pizza in New York City around me. I'm going to see now a number of uh, pizza places in my area. Good chance some of those pizza places are actually using Google keywords uh, bidding to bid on that exact term. So when somebody like myself bids on it, their company shows up right at the top. So that is an example of intent-based search. Somebody has an intention of finding something or getting an answer to something and they go to Google for it. Yeah, I, I would have thought that that would have been what it is, but yeah, thank you for explaining yeah. that. It was terrific. Tell me a little bit about Kingstar Media. Absolutely. So Kingstar Media is a performance-focused advertising agency. Uh, we've been in the market for 19 years, servicing primarily Canadian, uh, um, not just Canadian clients, but American, European, South American um, companies that are looking to enter the Canadian market. We specialize in helping them grow and acquire customers here. We were built originally uh, 19 years ago as a direct response production company, the traditional yell and sell infomercials, call now. If you call in the next 10 minutes, we'll give you 20% off. Uh, that's how the company was built. And over the last 19 years, we've really transitioned to focus to direct consumer companies like Trivago who have a set KPI, like a cost per visit, a cost per lead or a cost per acquisition. And we're helping them acquire those customers and achieve those KPIs over uh, traditional media like radio, print and television or online media, paid social, paid search, connected TV and programmatic. Excellent. Well, it's a big transition really, isn't it? For, for uh 
you know, funny ads to, you know, getting more serious into the advertising market. Absolutely. I mean, you know, back in the day, it's uh, when the company started, it was kind of a joke. Oh, you do those infomercials. You work with the ShamWiles, the Slap Shops, the Snuggies of the world. Um, but that performance kind of marketing and advertising has really trended because brands are now looking to justify media spend. 15, 20 years ago, large brands could spend $10 million in a year and be like, okay, well, we achieved a set amount of impressions. We're good for the year. Now, a lot of them are publicly funded or privately funded companies, and they have to prove to their shareholders or their board of directors, okay, we spent this money and we generated X. So the best way to do that is to work with a performance advertising agency like us. Yeah, I think um, advertising agencies, uh, although you can find some shoddy ones, as long as you can find the really good ones, I think they're um, worth the money that you invest in into them because you know they can help you with uh, you know all the things like you know intent based searches and and clicks per and uh, cents per click and yeah, <laughs> per click, yeah. click and yeah, absolutely. all of those and can help you understand and navigate through all those acronyms that you know that marketers use. So, so, um, sometimes find it difficult to understand what they mean. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, um, you know, what is the best way to get started in, in creating an ad if you're totally new to the whole process without using a marketing agency? Yeah, so, um, I th sorry, Rose, you broke up slightly, but I think the best way to get started uh, is to really just do your research. Like I said, the best thing about digital marketing is that there are the free tools available, whether it's through paid social, paid search, um, anything that you're looking to do, there's probably a YouTube video of how to do it. Um, use the tools from Google. They have their own uh, kind of blueprints. Facebook has their own blueprints and training softwares. Most of the time they're free or for a very low cost. Um, so planning a strategy and having an idea, the best way to we start with the campaign is understanding what that client is looking to achieve. What is their goal? Who is their customer? And then we go and plan the media strategy around that. Um, so that would be my suggestion to anybody getting started. What is your goal for the digital marketing campaign? What client are you trying to acquire? And then from there, you can map back and decide the best avenue to attract them. Okay, so is it possible then with uh, Google Ads, say that you're tracking, you know, the performance of a certain ad, um, can you split test them is, or A-B test them? Is that possible? Absolutely. Yeah. So there's multiple ways to do A-B testing. There are some softwares out there. If you're just looking to do it manually, uh, Facebook and Google both offer what are called dynamic ads. So a dynamic ad would be, let's say that uh, a typical ad has one headline, one description, and then one image. What a dynamic ad allows you to do is put in, let's say, four headlines, four descriptions, and four images. And what Facebook or Google will do then is kind of pair that the best combination for that customer. And you can see over the course of time, which ones they chose uh, has the best combination. And from there you can make the decision, okay, this was the best headline, this was the best image, uh, this is the best main copy. You can understand what positioning is really resonating with the audience. And what is a good length of time to have an ad? Um, you know, it's like five days, seven days, 30 days, Another great question, Rose. It really depends on the level of budget. Typically, what we like to do, um, if you have an acquisition cost of, let's just say, $50, that's what your goal is to acquire a customer. We're looking to spend at least 10x that to figure out if this is worth the channel. So let's say for $50, $500 is the perfect budget for it. It gives you enough time to really judge if it's effectiveness. You can run for a little bit longer and make optimizations, but typically after five to seven business days, we have a little bit of indication of if a channel or if a certain strategy is working or not. So, um, so then it's, uh, you know, if you've split tested your ad and you find one that's, um, you know, performing better than the others, would you can, can you continue with that particular ad and, um, you know, ditch the rest? Absolutely. So what we like to do is iterate. So we'll start uh, with a new campaign. We'll have four different positionings uh, for the same product. We'll probably find one or two that are the leaders. And from there, we'll iterate it slightly, perhaps just adding different colors, different texts, emojis, just to slightly iterate um, that positioning and improve on it. And then from there, you can double down. And it's really the possibilities are endless of how you want to position that that top performing one. Wow. It's, um, it's, it's, it. <laughs> For, for someone like me that doesn't uh, do a lot of paid advertising, it sounds like it's really simple. Um, you know, I always thought it was quite difficult. 
I think that is the, you know, the common uh, thought is that it's extremely difficult. You know, it's technology, it's very complicated. And there definitely are nuances. And once you get to a high level of spend, it becomes extremely complicated um, for certain channels, for sure. Uh, but just to get started, if you have a, you know, a base goal and you're looking for a you know, small geo target, a small niche audience, and you have a relatively you know, affordable small budget, you can still make it work and you can stay up, scale quickly. The best thing about digital marketing is you can always turn it off right away. I've, I have a campaign on tonight that's not performing well, I can just press pause. It's a lot different than your traditional campaigns like TV or radio, where you're typically locked in for a set amount of time. You can always pause and then restart the campaigns for digital at any time. Yeah, um, and getting on to like, you know, uh, media campaigns like TV and radio, um, you know, are the Google ads transferable to those mediums or not? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. I think that basically the response that you see in the ads that do work on Google, they will trend over to uh, TV and radio, not 100% of the time, but we do see a lot of carryover. If it's the same target audience, whether you're reaching them on Google, whether you're reaching them on TV or radio, the same message uh, will work. Excellent. That's excellent. That's a, um, I guess it's a plus really, isn't it? If you want to, you know, broaden your audience or um, the way you want to do stuff. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, uh, tell me, um, where can people find you if they want to work with you? Yeah, kingstarmedia.com. That's our website. Uh, we have a lead form there. Uh, fill in, reach out to us. Our phone number, email, contact information is all there. And we'd love to hear from you. And where else can they find out? Instagram, I see. Yes, Instagram, Kingstar Digital, uh, Facebook, Kingstar Media, Twitter, Kingstar Media. Uh, it's all one word. King Star Media, very simple. Should be, we're we are work very hard on our SEO, so you can find us on Google if uh, if you can't remember it. Just type in King Star, and we'll be there. Terrific. And just getting on to you just mentioned SEO, and I and I um, uh, didn't think to ask that question. Yeah. You know, keywords, SEO, all that sort of thing. How do they marry together in an ad? Absolutely. So. SEM uh, in that paid search, anybody can go on paid search and try to bid a certain amount to be on those one or two top results. For organic, the listings uh, below the paid search, it takes a lot more work and a lot more time to be listed on that first page or in those first two results. Typically, uh, the way that companies that we work with do it is a lot of uh, PR, a lot of backlinking, a lot of content writing, basically focus around a set list of keywords that you want to rank high for. A lot of people give up on SEO after three to four months, they're not seeing results. You can put in the best strategy, put in the best amount of work, have the best team. It will still take you six to nine months to really start seeing uh, your page on that first page of the organic listings. So they're really completely different strategies, paid search versus SEO. One's quick and it's very more uh, easy to achieve those top positions with spending money. Uh, the second way on SEO is a lot more strategy focus very consistent uh, performance, a lot of content writing, uh, a lot of man hours to get those rankings. Yeah, SEO takes a long time. I, yeah. Although I um, um, got a, a notification from Google a couple of weeks ago that my name ranks on the first page of Google. So I was like, oh my God. <laughs> that's that's very impressive. Cheap, that's <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I thought, no, maybe they just send me a lie. I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, it's been an absolute pleasure. Have you got Thank any you. words of wisdom that you would like to share with our audience today? Yeah, I think the, my words of wisdom for digital marketing is things are always changing. You always have the opportunity tomorrow to try something new. Uh, digital and social marketing is the best environment to test the idea. There's nothing more gratifying than having an idea or a product that you thought of. Uh, you start to see sales and gain traction online and it's never too late to get started advice excellent advice thank you so much for your time today it's been a pleasure and i hope you'll come back again later in the year and um, we can discuss digital marketing a bit further i love that rose thank you so much you've been listening to talking with the experts hosted by rose davidson make sure you have a look at our back catalog over at talkingwiththeexperts.com and be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode we look forward to your company next time. Talking with the experts.